Now, let's have a conversation about a unanimous decision that was made on the 18th of December 2019. That said, and this was made by the Supreme Court, and it said that counting the 48 hours for detaining suspects will now include weekends, holidays, as well as periods of strike and civil unrest. And um, this was a legal petition that was filed by the very man that's seated next to me today. And so he'll give us a bit of background as to what exactly this means, because um, effectively on the 18th of this month, it was supposed to take place. And so if you get arrested and it's a Friday, now you have the right to also be uh, tried in court, even on the weekends. Initially, that wouldn't happen. And so you'd have to wait till the Monday after. And, you know, that means spending the entire weekend behind bars with no law speaking on your behalf. And so legal practitioner, he is a director for Human Rights and Governance Center. Uh, Mr. Martin Fable is joining us this morning. Good morning. morning it's morning. a pleasure meeting you finally, actually. And uh, I'm pleasure. so honored. But first of all, give us a bit of background as mm -hmm. to how the Supreme Court arrived at this decision. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's the case that um, there was this widespread practice where powerful people in our society could cause the arrest of a suspect on a Friday afternoon. Mm. That was ostensibly to make sure that the person will be in custody for Saturday, Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. And we'll be tied the person if, if Monday is a public holiday, yeah. like Easter Monday and so on and so forth. Yeah, so, and it had cost us so much. So, I mean, as I practice law day in, day out, I thought that, no, I'm going to do something about this thing. So I decided to approach the Supreme Court, that's filed a lawsuit, yeah. and then... Three what? years down the line. Okay. Three whole years. That's yeah. how long it took. Yeah, sometimes they are overwhelmed. You know, now we are activating, we are using a lot, the, the, we are beginning to use the court system a lot. Okay. So the cases are many. So mm. that's So really, it's understandable. Yes. But at least there was success at the yes, end yes, anyway. Yes, that's it. How has this changed the, um, you know, the system okay. in Ghana currently? Okay. So uh, for now, we would say it's a lot of euphoria. Mm. You know, because it just started on the 18th of May. So actually, I'm even here to begin to collect data on those okay. who go on Saturdays. But it's good. So it means that for now, was the law has been... In May, not June? May. Oh, it was in May. May. Uh, That's when May. it took effect? Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So we'll gather data. But at least right now, it means that on the books, the law is changed. And naturally, yeah. you know, things like this big decisions like this will have teething problems when you begin to implement. Mm -hmm. But we have all the patients. Isn't it not better than those days where there was nothing at yeah. all? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm expecting that after the euphoria dies down, we will see real action on the ground. We'll gather data. Maybe then subsequently you can invite mm. us. We'll come and then share the data with you to see how it's improving. What are some but, of the changes that have been made as a result of this? Because you're saying that in the beginning you'll face some teething problems. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure there were some challenges. Mm -hmm. What are those deliberate changes that were made to tackle these challenges? So number one, you know that the court uh, uh, officers because they are not uh, supposed to work on Saturdays, Sundays, and mm. any other day the court will sit. Yeah. They have to clear, you know, uh, work with the finance uh, department of the judicial service, okay. finance directorate, to make sure that court officers, including even the judges, so the judges, the court clerks, the ushers, security, all mm. those who would come to work on Saturday or Sunday, they will be paid appropriately. Okay. And that was a huge task. You know, in the context of Ghana being a developing country, we don't have much money. Mm. That's how come even the court gave the chief justice six months to roll out. Okay. okay. So that's one of the big changes. And then two, uh, the chief justice giving directives to the supervising high court judges. You know, Ghana with 16 regions, he can, the chief justice cannot be everywhere. Mm -hmm. So in the regions, there are people who help him to administer the system. So all those people too had to be uh, sensitized okay. and given appropriate directives. Oh, so I those see. Were, yes. But what's the level of awareness? How many people actually really know that this law actually exists? That's where the problem is. So I see that one interview is not sufficient. Yeah. Right now we're going to seek funding to roll out adverts mm. because we need to make a lot of uh, noise about it. We need to increase the advocacy. Okay. Otherwise, like what you're saying, the law would, would the implementation will be very slow. Mm. Yes, it will be exceedingly slow if we don't increase the advocacy. So basically what it means is that I have a right 
to see uh, or to go to court even on weekends after I've been arrested on maybe a Friday Excellent. or a day before a holiday. Excellent. And nobody's going to stop me from doing that. Excellent. That's it. That's what the court is saying. 365 days a mm. week, a, a year, there must be a court to determine bail. You say, yes. So that practice where the police could arrest on Friday and say, oh, you know, Saturday is a holiday, Sunday. We did a cause on search Monday, holiday. No, no, those are over. Okay. The courts are open now. So if once, so this is how it starts. You see, once the incentive, that's to say keeping the person for the weekend has been thrown out, mm. even there is uh, pressure on the police to determine. He, the policeman, you know, Ghana, the way we laugh in us on Saturdays yeah. and Sundays. So if the case is not really serious, the policeman even himself, that's the... Uh, uh, what do you call the investigator and the crime officer mm -hmm. in the police station who are responsible. They have to determine if you have a funeral and you know that maybe this is a small altercation between two people. Yeah. The question is, would he want to forfeit the funeral or naming ceremony he wants to attend so that yeah. he'll go to court? That's it. So that it means that in practice, there's going to be behavioral change even in the police administration itself. Mm. Uh -huh. In the first place, let's make this point. I'm not saying that it's all the police who are doing it. Of course. You know, in every institution, there are rogues. Yeah. Every institution has rogues. Mm -hmm. So it's the rogues we are referring to. Okay. So now, if he sees that going to court is going to uh, deny him the opportunity to attend his social function, he may well grant bail. So exactly. that in itself, too, is good. It's a good thing. Yeah. Okay, but we're relying on the media. I know that the media is a very powerful channel to convey mm -hmm. your message. Yeah. But what about the people who may not necessarily get constant access to the media? What are the other measures you're putting in place to get the message out there to the hinterlands as well? Excellent. So we want to do community engagements. That's what I said. Because it just started, we're sending out proposals to seek funding because this one you need a bit of money to go on the ground. Okay. You know, and then engage communities and all that. But shouldn't government take up this? <laughs> I mean, is it not part of government's well, mandate to educate people yeah. on the law as well? Yeah, you're right. But if you ask the NCC, uh, they've always yeah. been underfunded for decades. It didn't start today. Yeah. If you ask the NCC, they've always been underfunded. So maybe we'll look for, uh, forward to working with private sector. Okay. Yeah. But, but you have approached the NCC. They are very much aware of... No, I haven't. Okay. Actually, because I know of the problems that they are, I haven't, just because of the, the, their own challenges. So you don't want to overwhelm them. Exactly. But eventually, we're expecting that they would also take up, um, you know, the mandate and educate people. Yes, maybe. But, well, I think at least officially to, to be good to contact them so that at least they are aware. You never know. Maybe they can... Uh, add this to other programs they are running. Why we'll is this very dear to you? Because I remember when this decision was made, mm -hmm. if you check all the media sites, everybody mm -hmm. was mentioning lawyer mm -hmm. Martin Pebu. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know that you are the one who puts forward mm -hmm. you know, that petition yeah. to have this law passed. Yeah. Why is it so personal to you? Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, personal liberties, okay, very, very precious. The Supreme Court said that's the most precious thing you have as a human being. When the police arrest you, you suddenly cannot decide when you want to eat, mm. when you want to make a phone call. Can you imagine? You yeah. see how sometimes we're having addicted to our phones and yeah. all that. All those ones, you begin to lose them. So your personal liberty is about the most important after your own life. Mm. You see it. Yes. So I saw that, look, if we don't take steps to nip that practice in the bud mm. tomorrow, it may get to me. That's always the danger. Don't okay. think that, oh, you're a lawyer, nothing like that can happen. No, 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 no. I'm sure you've seen how lawyers have been arrested on occasion. Mm -hmm. huh. So the whole idea is this. When your neighbor's beard is on fire, you, you find a water. Bucket, a bucket of water for, for your, yourself. Mm -hmm. But educate us a bit. So let's just say that you have been arrested, mm -hmm. put behind bars, awaiting court trial. What are some of the benefits that, you know, you, you don't get anymore? I mean, mm -hmm. if you had access to your phone mm -hmm. and all that, yeah. what happens? Yeah, so they take the phone away. What about family members? Are you allowed to at least speak to a family member? And when yes. they deny you, what do you do? You are, you are allowed to. Even the police, they have what they call the uh, service instructions. It's allowed that you'll be allowed to. Uh, there there are cases where people have not been allowed. You are perfectly right. So naturally, as for, like the way I keep saying, in every system there are rogues who mm -hmm. will not play by the rules. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes they get uh, irritated by the mannerisms of the suspect and all manner of things. So those ones, you would find them. Yes. How does this fall in line with the SDGs? Because mm -hmm. I know that there's a part that says justice for all. Yes. And this is a fight that's looking at yes. that. How yes. do they now work in tandem? 
This is a direct improvement of access to justice. A huge one, because, I mean, this Saturday-Sunday problem has been a problem for decades. And can you imagine, even in our 69 constitution, mm. those days, because we knew it was a problem, we expressly stated that the person be brought to court within 24 hours. Okay. Yeah, that's in our 1969 constitution. Mm. So it tells you that this problem didn't start today. So with this decision by the Supreme Court, it means that we've tremendously, at least right now on paper, increased access to justice for people who need bail on okay. weekends. Okay. Yes, and you know, we've moved several notches ahead of a lot of the African countries. If you read further in the Supreme Court decision, you see even Nigeria, yeah. Kenya, so many African countries. Our decision is super. We've moved ahead of them. Are, we, least, are we ever going to get to a point where maybe we'll move it back to the 1969 constitution that says 24 hours? Hopefully. hopefully. Is that because, something that you're looking at, you know, fighting as well? All right now, not immediately, okay. but we are just hoping. But actually, the Supreme Court put in something that may even equate to the 1969 Constitution. Mm. That's what they said. You see, they say come within 48 hours. But in the same decision, they say that, look, as soon as you have the suspect, mm -hmm. okay, or accused, and you see that for this one, by all means, there's no way you want to grant him bail, then straight away go to court. Okay. So it means that they can even go in less than 24. Mm. You see, yes, that's what the decision says. It says, look. So let's say if it's a very big national issue, people are very angry. So the police don't want to grant bail and then their anger will increase. You yeah. know, sometimes there are cases like that. Mm -hmm. So you see, as soon as it's clear to you that you don't want to grant this person bail, please take him to court. Let the judge de decide. Because under the constitution, the power belongs to a judge, not okay. the police. You see okay. Uh -huh. okay. But so, in, in cases where they are now gathering evidence and all of that, then sometimes that's permitted. Are Perfect. you allowed to go beyond the 48 hours if you're no, still no, gathering no. evidence? No, you're not allowed. It says within. So the power to determine whether the suspect should stay for more than 48 hours belongs to the judge. And, and they're saying that okay. don't exhaust the 48 before you go. No. It says that if you determine that this person, I won't grant him bail. Uh -huh. Maybe because you think it's a, such a huge national issue that even society itself is angry. You know, we understand sometimes society is angry at yeah. things. So... When you keep the person in, sometimes some even say preventive custody. Yeah. It helps to assuage people's anger and the rest. Yes, so that determination, when you say, look, for his own safety, we want to keep him, or we need him for extra, or we need him or her to gather uh, this uh, extra evidence and all that. Mm -hmm. Yes, take those submissions to the judge. Okay. Ultimately, the power to determine whether he should stay or be admitted to be belongs to a judge. You okay. see it? Uh -huh, that's where it is. So don't, don't as police or BNI or Yoku or uh, this, uh, any other agency giving the power to arrest, decide that, look, I'll keep him until maybe the 47th hour and go to court. No. Okay. Anyway, final words before we wrap up on this conversation with people who are watching you. What would you say? Yeah, that we should increase education, mm. education, 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 because that is it. It's when you know your rights that the police themselves will take you uh, seriously. Absolutely. You see, so let's pass the word on that now. The law is that if you are arrested on the Friday, you have a right to be presented before a judge on Saturday okay. or Sunday. Mm. So if the police or any other security agency tell you that there's no court on weekends, that's a big lie. Mm. I see. That's a big lie. And that's how we wrap up our conversation yeah. with uh, Mr. Martin Pebu. He is the director uh, for Human Rights and Governance Centre, and, well, pardon me, lawyer Martin mm. Pebu. Thank oh, you so right. much uh, right. for speaking yeah, to well, us this morning. I hope yeah. that we've been able to educate as many people as possible.